Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with my tutorials bringing us from electromagnetism to optics. This is video number four and I'm going to discuss harmonic sphere sinusoidal waves. The previous videos to this are number two where I discuss waves and I showed why we use x plus and minus v times t and in number three I derived the wave equation. We'll be using the results from video two in this particular video. So before we continue, I think we, need to, we do need to discuss what the harmonic or sinusoidal wave is. So a harmonic or sinusoidal wave means we're talking about cosines or sines. Now, why, why are we talking about cosines or sines? Because that's the definition. If you're talking about harmonics or sinusoids, you're talking about cosine or sine. Now, what's the difference between cosine or sine? Well, they both give you waves, but it just their argument or their phase is different. They're slightly out of phase or slightly out of, of, of shift with each other. So in actual fact, you can talk about waves as being cosines or sines, and the only difference really is where they begin. So a cosine, the cos of naught is one, so it begins at a central maximum or with a central maximum. So this would be a cosine, and a sine begins with a central minimum, like this. So of course you can go from cosine to sine by just adding a phase shift, or shifting the phase. So what is the phase? Well, let's if, if you write sine, what's between the brackets is known as your phase or your argument. So this here is your phase or your argument. So the if we shift the, the phase or the argument of your sine by plus or minus pi over 2, we get a cosine. So what we can say is this. If we take the cos of a plus the, the, a phase shift, I'm going to call the phase shift delta, we get sine. So we need to come what is this phase shift? And the phase shift is pi over 2. So if we shift the argument of the cosine by pi over 2, we get the uh, we get back to sine. So delta is pi over 2 going from cosine to sine. And that's very important. Now the other thing we need to know is that by if the, if the phase is 2 pi, well then you've actually gone nowhere. So let's just look at cosine. So if we have, so our general cosine is cos a plus delta. Now if delta is equal to 2 pi, then we have gone nowhere. So what we've done is, we've gone right the whole way around our unit circle again and actually gone nowhere. So let's say we began here, well there's our unit circle. Let's say that we began at this particular point here. Then if we go from, if we have delta is equal to 2 pi, we go right the way back around like so. So we go right the way around 2 pi and we're back to where we started. So that means that delta must be between 0 and 2 pi. So we write it as follows. So 2 pi, if we move by 2, fi, 2 pi or shift the argument by 2 pi, we come back to where we started. So it's now time to start talking about cosine or is start talking about uh, harmonic waves. So we saw in a previous video, or video number two specifically, that we can write the wave function as a function of x prime in the s prime coordinate system, or x plus or minus vt in the s coordinate system. So what we're going to do now is see if we can use our harmonic or sinusoidal waves as our wave function. So that means we're going to have the following. That psi is going to be cos of x. But the important thing to note here is we'll say x prime, just for the moment we'll say x prime. But the thing is we cannot take the, the uh, we cannot take the cosine or the sine of something which is dimensionless. So we need to multiply by something. So we multiply another constant here, we call it k. So we take the cosine of kx and that is supposed to give us that something that is dimensionless. So if the units on x which is position are meters, 
that means the units on K must be per meter, giving us something which is dimensionless. So in actual fact, we always need to multiply by Kx. So it's the sine of Kx or the cosine of Kx. And what we call K, we call it the propagation number or the wave number. Okay, and you must always have the wave number. So what are we after creating when we, if we take, if we write down or we have to draw a plot cos kx? What would cos kx look like? Well, it would just be a wave standing in space. It wouldn't be moving because all we're doing is plugging in the values for position and plotting them. Simple. How do we create a travelling wave? Well, we spoke about travelling waves earlier on. So to create a travelling wave, we have cos of k outside of x plus or minus vt. One sec there now. So psi is equal to cos of k outside of x plus or minus vt is a travelling wave. Or of course we could have sine and we would still have a traveling wave. All right, so yeah, th this is the functional form or this is a harmonic wave function. Now, it's time to look, I think, at the properties of the wave, the amplitude, the wavelength and the period and so on. So let's draw, let's draw a wave, okay? So we have, let's say the wave isn't, isn't it's, it's got a phase shift, so it's neither cosine or sine at the moment, or if you draw it, it isn't immediately obvious. Actually, I'll do that again. So it's neither going through the origin or going through a central maximum at the origin. So we need to first talk about the amplitude, which is the height of the wave. Then we define the wavelength. So the wavelength is the distance between two equal points on the wave. And we give the Greek letter lambda as the placeholder for wavelength. We also have the speed of the wave, v. In this case, let's say the wave is moving to the right. Now, the important point to note is as follows. As I said earlier on, we can adjust the argument of the wave by adding a phase shift. So let's just go back. We had, let's say we have the cos of k x plus or minus vt. And then we're going to add delta. or minus delta. So we have a phase shift. So remember, if delta is 2 pi, well then we'll go back to where we started and we've done nothing. But if it's anywhere between 0 and 2 pi, well it has, an, it has an influence. Now note the following. If we let the if x is equal to vt minus delta over k, if this is the case, then the phase is 0. And what we're after doing is we're after coming to the central maximum. So let's say here is the central maximum. The central maximum occurs at delta over k. And I hope that's reasonably straightforward and reasonably obvious to you. So, so far we have the amplitude, we have the wavelength, and we have the speed, and we've found out where the central maximum is. But we've also discussed about the, the phase shift. Now it's time to start discussing the really important elements. So like I said, if delta is between 0 and 2 pi, like that. OK, next, if we move one wavelength, like I said, we're after coming to the same point on the wave. So let's, so let's look at the following. So our wavelength is the distance between, let's say, two maxima. And what we're going to do is, if we move by one wavelength along our wave, we're after coming to the same point. So adding one wavelength to your position is equivalent to adding 2 pi to your delta. Okay, so I'll, I'll write the, the general wave, of course, is cos k outside of x minus vt plus or minus delta. So 
So the general wave is constant for kx, is k outside of x plus or minus bt plus or minus delta. But we know that if we add 2 pi to delta, we move nowhere, but also if we add lambda to x, we move nowhere. So what we do is as follows. We note that psi of x and t is the same if we add one wavelength. Okay, now what does that mean? If we just look at the argument, it's going to be the following. I'm going to use, I'm going to use green. So what we're going to get is that, let's say I'm going to write sine instead of cosine this time. And that's going to be equal to the sine of k outside of x plus lambda and so on. So we get the sine. But of course, because this is the same as moving by 2 pi in a, a delta of 2 pi, we get the following as well. It's also equal to So what we can say is that the magnitude of k lambda is equal to 2 pi. Or we get the wave number k is equal to 2 pi over lambda. The magnitude of the wave number is 2 pi over lambda. Okay, now note by the way that this only works for harmonic sinusoidal waves. So if you're looking for the wave number for a, I don't know, a, the, the wave number for the ele an electron's wave, um, wave function, for example, you won't get k is equal to 2 pi over lambda, you'll get something else. So we say this is the wave number. Now by the way, it uh, it was introduced in order to make the argument dimensionless, but we'll see later on that it also gives you the direction of propagation of your wave. But I'll talk about that later. The next thing we need to do is look at our temporal period, because we said the wavelength is essentially your spatial period. So we need to apply the exact same uh, argument. So this time, psi of x of t is going to be the same if we move the, temp the, the time by one temporal period. Whether we move forwards or backwards. So that, of course, means that we have the sine of k outside of x plus or minus bt is going to be the same if we do the following. And I know the brackets are looking a bit uh, dodgy, but we also saw that's the same as moving by 2 pi. Putting it all together, what we get is that the temporal period is lambda over v. So we saw that the spatial period lambda, over, when it's over 2 pi, was equal to the wavelength or the wave number. And now what we get is the temporal period is lambda over v. All right. Now, is there anything else we need to know? Well, the frequency, OK, the frequency is the number of units of time per wave. Or sorry, the period is the number of units of time per wave, and the inverse of which is the frequency, which is the number of waves per time. So that means the frequency is equal to 1 over the temporal period. Or we can we sometimes use the Greek letter nu instead of f. Okay? And that's simply going to be equal to uh, therefore sorry, that means what we have is that the frequency or um, the speed of excuse me now one second, bear with me. Bear with me. So we have the speed is equal to the frequency multiplied by the wavelength. So the, the speed, this is speed, this is frequency, 
and we have wavelength. Okay? So is there anything else we need to look at? Just to, I suppose, just to sum up, let's write the most generate wave we can have. So we can have that, let's say, f of our psi function of x and t is sine. And let's say it's kx, um, you know, it's, it's uh, k outside of Now, the interesting thing here is we can we need to uh, introduce the angular frequency. Why do we use the angular frequency? It's because it's just much easier to deal with it. So the it's um yeah, I suppose the the best way of looking at it is we use the Greek letter omega and there's two pi times the 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 linear or spatial frequency. It's not the spatial frequency, two pi times the frequency. Okay? Or that's k that. Okay, so another way we can write this is psi of x and t is sine kx plus omega t plus or minus delta i. Okay, that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also add a comment in the box below.